Hey guys, the Lord reminded me um, about something that happened on Friday that I wanted to include um, in these other two videos, the part one and part two that I put up um, just a, a while ago. So um, he delivered me and it was through watching my videos that I was able to be delivered. So, he just reminds me constantly that when I think I'm doing something for somebody else, I'm really doing it for myself, too, you know. Just like he reminded me when I forgave those people. I'm thinking I'm doing it for them. But really, I've gotten so much benefit from it that um, it's benefited me. So, making the videos, um, I'm looking at it differently now because... I can go back and watch it and I can encourage myself. And so I don't have that level of encouragement in my life. So it's really nice to be able to see and hear the word. Like I said, just, you know, from me. So that was so encouraging. And he took me through it solid. I mean, on that level of intensity, solid for about four and a half hours. I was in such spiritual pain and i had to go out there and i had to figure out how was i going to go through this pain and still represent jesus because before i would give in to my pain and i would lash out at people you know if somebody cut me off or sits under me the wrong way oh you finna get this okay but that's not how i'm trying to do it now really i'm trying to live my life based on his word and so it was so difficult and I asked for prayer. I asked for prayer uh, throughout the day that day. And so, and I was praying throughout the day. And that was one of the things that I would really want to share as, as a part of my testimony and why my video came into play. It's the video that I did on resentment and how to block your blessing. And so, because he had me going through this trial on Friday, it had been building up, but I had been pushing away, pushing away, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, um, the Lord is going to come through. He's going to come through. He's going to come through. And then he didn't come through. And at 12 o'clock Friday, I was faced with, am I going to doubt God over something as, as trivial as this? And, and resentment can happen in so many different ways. And I'm sure... Because I had done that video, it reminded me that this is a Judas moment. This is a Judas moment. This is a moment where you have to decide, is, you're going to have to decide, are you going to let this circumstance make you take your lordship away from him and you become your own God? And I've done that so many times that I was able to recognize it this time. And I know that me just having made those videos brought it even further, you know, and more quickly, you know, to my mind. So what I ended up doing was just praying to him, Lord, please don't let me be offended in you. Please don't let this separate me from you. Please show me how to, to, to stay with you through this. I'm confused. I'm hurt. I mean, I was like, how do I continue to make videos for you? You know, when I'm feeling like this. I mean, when I was feeling like that, there was absolutely no way in the world I, I, would, I could have come in front of the camera. I would have been lying. I would have been lying if I had done, if I hadn't been able to get over, if he hadn't helped me through this, I wouldn't have been able to make any more videos for God because I would have lost my level of faith. And I begged him. I said, oh, man, I can't, I can't. Please don't let me be offended. And I was just wanted to know his plan and I wanted to understand how to get a solution to my problem. And about 4.30 on Friday evening, um, he came, he get, I was back, I was right back where I was at 11 o'clock that morning. That was crazy. That was crazy. It was just crazy. But, um, and I, and one of the reasons why I want to be able to give this level of testimony is just so people can understand I'm still struggling with this, you know, all the stuff that I know, there's stuff that I don't know. 
And I know I don't know it. So I don't think I know everything. But the stuff that he has taught me, this is why I'm out here sharing it. And I don't mind being given a word. I mean, if you got a word that, you know, you can feed me with, I mean, I appreciate it. I mean, I, I like to learn. And I'm going to take what I'm being told. I'm going to go ask Jesus. That's how I found out a whole lot of truth. I, I took things that people were, were telling me. And like I said before, I went back and asked the Lord, you know, to give me a word. Tell me, you know, explain to me what they're talking about. So the thing that I'm asking you to do, I did it. So it's up to you. You know, your salvation belongs to you. And I am his witness. I am his witness of what he has explained to me. And this is the thing that Christians don't understand. Everybody's not going to make it. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 explains this. Matthew 25 explains this. Everybody who calls him Lord is not going to make it with him in his kingdom. So you're going to have to decide which one of them you're going to be. And they're going to be those that are going to make it. There will be people who will make it. So there's something that they will have figured out that they needed to do in order for them to be able to get that level of information so that they could be in the kingdom. So you're going to have to figure out which one you want to be. And I'm here to give you my level of testimony to try and help you make that decision. And it's going to take the work of the Holy Spirit in order to help you get there. You're not going to get there on anything that they're teaching you in Christianity. I promise you that. There's no religion that has been created on this planet that has adequately um, left a pathway to God's kingdom. It's inside of his word. And you're going to have to get in there with the Holy Spirit in order to get it out. Um, John 10. There's only one door to the sheepfold. And that door has a name. His name is the Holy Spirit. Just telling you. So this is the other thing that um, I wanted to kind of bring with my testimony too. It's just for it to be a level of witness, you know, for me. So that. What I'm trying to do is something different than what I've seen other people do. Because I've seen that this, this strategy doesn't work. What Christians are doing, what Hebrew Israelites are doing, what um, Hebrew roots people are doing, they're creating proselytites. That's what they're doing. What, no, I call them proselytites. It's a proselyte. It's a proselyte. That's what it's called. And Matthew 23 talks about it. And when you look, they're not, I mean, for, especially for those who had an opportunity to find out the truth. If he gave you, like when all these YouTube videos and all this information that's out here on this internet, and then you're not taking this opportunity, this generation that did not take this level of opportunity to find out who Jesus is and to find out the truth, you're going to be judged two times worse than those who did not have this opportunity to get this level of information. So when you've been given a lot of responsibility and a lot of opportunity, then a lot is expected and required out of you. And Christians today don't get it. They think that they're going to get in on some kind of path. So there's only one door to the sheepfold. One. Um, I just don't know. And this is where I have a problem, you know, with my faith. Because I believe, you know, so much in his word that sometimes I forget myself that everybody's not going to make it. And that everybody that Jesus talked to didn't understand what he was talking about either. And he was Jesus. If you can't explain it to him, then how am I supposed to explain it to him? I mean, look at the rich, um, is it the rich young ruler? He kept all the commandments. He kept all the commandments. And what did the Lord say? He said it's easier for a camel to get through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. And he kept all of the commandments. I just don't understand how you can have that level of, of knowledge and then still not be able to hear the truth. I'm telling you, he's told me things about Solomon too. People think that Solomon is the wisest man who's ever lived. I had that conversation, you know, with Cody as well. And um, Solomon was the opposite. He was the stupidest man to ever live. This whole demonic government system and church system that we got set up today 
come straight out of some of the junk that Solomon did when he started conjuring up demons and started making friends with them and building them temples and stuff. You know, read. In his old age, he turned against God. That makes you stupid. And if, if Solomon has three books in the Bible. So if you go through Proverbs, it's hard to get through Proverbs because there's just so much stuff in there. You go, It's hard to get all that stuff. It's easier for me to read Psalms than it is for me to read Proverbs. I mean, that's how much truth that jungle was laying down in it. And um, Ecclesiastes and then Song of Solomon. So, and this joker turned around and started worshiping demons. It is enough to put the fear of God inside of me. And so I am working daily to clean uh, myself from sin and to just keep asking for wisdom. That was the other thing, you know, that I wanted to bring out today. And I'm glad he let me do it, you know, in this video. Over Sabbath, he's been teaching me, you know, about wisdom and how important it is. And I was listening to Proverbs. Um, my nose is itching again, man. Hold on. Let me pause the video. I have allergies and for some reason when I'm sitting here doing this video my nose just goes into a whole new you know place but um we were talking about um Solomon and uh wisdom it's one of the most important things that you could ever pray for and making good decisions is the best thing that you could strive to do every day and so my life is dedicated now to living peacefully and making the best decisions that I possibly can. And I try and encourage as many people to do and, and think about that, you know, for themselves as I possibly can, you know, as well. So um, just really, I'm so happy that the Lord encouraged me to start doing these YouTube videos. Um, it's really starting to bring me a level of benefit that I didn't even know I needed. That's what obedience does for you, man. That's what obedience does for you. So one of the last things I want to put on this video, I've got a few minutes left, and that's to talk about um, faith and works. Now, if you go back to James chapter 2, he talks about how you need both faith and works. And I think it starts at 17, but that's the chapter of the thing. Uh, yeah, two, uh, James 2.17. And so one of the words that the Lord gave me to add to that is when you go back and read that, then you go and start really letting the Holy Spirit, you know, reveal the scripture to you, especially for Christians that don't believe in works. Time about another video. You have to have both. And for those of you guys, you foolish virgin who are asleep to this truth, when he wakes you up and you understand that you don't have any works to go along with your professed faith. You don't have no oil in your lamp. He told me that that correlates with faith and works correlates with the oil. And if you don't have those two present in you, if you have not worked down here while it was day and made sure that you had that level of, of, of understanding about who God is working inside of you, circumcising your heart he is not going to recognize you when he comes back and again this is the thing that post trippers and, and, and mid trippers don't understand the Lord said he's coming back at a time when you're not expecting him so for post trippers who's not going to be looking for Jesus other than the, the wicked if you are a believer and you still not looking for Jesus when um after the tribulation so that tells you that there are two times that he's coming back and you don't know how he's going to do it matthew 24 when you get down to that part that talks about the servant he said blesses the servant who will be found to be doing this the, what they needed to be doing they're going to be blessed and then you're going to have that servant that's going to say that the lord is not coming back yet so therefore i could go back out here in the street and have one more uh, time with sin. There's a video I'm going to put it the, in the description box here, and I'm going to beg y'all to look at it. I'm running out of time, but it correlates to what I'm saying right now about being ready and being in a state of disrepair after you've put in so much energy and so much time, but then you're still not ready 
when it's time for the Lord to come back and collect his bride. So that Matthew 24 has so much information in it that pre-trippers are not paying attention to, mid-trippers are not paying attention to, and post-trippers are not paying attention to. It's like they only latch on to certain parts of it and they go blind with the rest of it. He said he's coming back when people are not going to be waiting on him. So that blows the post-trippers argument out of the water, you know. The So I'm telling you, the information is there. So it's up to you. Ask the Holy Spirit. But faith and works, cousin. If you don't have no faith and works, you don't have no oil in your lamp. And if you have no oil in your lamp, you're not, you're not going to be with the Lord. Matthew 25. The foolish virgin versus the wise virgin. Somebody figured it out, guys. Somebody figured it out. That's why they're a wise virgin. Wake up, Israel. Until the next video.